tree thinking interpretation of trees so how to interpret the phylogenetic tree that is what this brief video is all about so in this video we are going to cover many topics like uh, sister groups what are the sister groups and uh, reciprocal monophyly cryptic speciation species splits versus species lumps uh, compatibility of the two trees uh, you know we in the last module we have seen uh, what are these resolved right the trees which are completely resolved that means only uh, bifurcating nodes right so uh, this the, in this module we will see uh, further terms like pruning merging time tree consensus tree uh, and then tree to tree distances and uh, subtree pruning and regrafting that is SPR maneuvers and tree space so uh, stay tuned and uh, let's start with the, uh, the, the the first concept called tree thinking so tree thinking is all about understanding the evolutionary connections among the tips you know the topology i've already explained to you it is the branching order and uh, you know the what is the connection between the tips tips are usually species so how these species are related that is what this tree thinking is all about so we really don't have to interact with the uh, the ancestors to find the relationship between the extinct species. Extinct means already dead. So one example would be uh, when you are making your own family genealogy, uh, like great great grandfather and grandmother till now. You know all different kinds of aunts and uncle and cousin, first cousin, second cousin, uh, first cousin, twice removed, all these terms are part of this uh, family genealogy, right? So you don't have to interact with uh, those, uh, you know, uh, those uh, uh, great great grandfather who is no more uh, in your family. Just by looking at the current uh, people you can talk to them who are your parents and their uh, parents like that you can you can draw the, the genealogy so exactly like that uh, today well you know whatever the plants that we have plants and animals and uh, microbes that we have on the planet earth uh, you can take the sequences the dna sequence and then you can uh, uh, align it and then uh, reconstruct the phylogeny uh, to see the relationship between them you know you don't have to see that uh, in strict speaking you really don't need any fossil evidence to construct the relationship between that you know so that is what the, the tree thinking and this particular concept I've already told you some terms that is also you know uh, that is often used with the trees like the tips or the leaves like bacterium bird marsupial and human so these are the tips two kinds of trees you can see that one is basically perpendicular uh, you know or rectangular this is rectangular perpendicular tree while this one is a more uh, uh, you know diagonal or angular tree so both trees represent the same thing so it's just a matter of choice merely styles you know so rectangular on the left side is a choice if the trees are drawn proportional to the branch length so in the last module i told you when you draw the, the trees in proportional to the branch length these are known as phylogram while this is not drawn in proportion to the branch length you know so that is uh, basically that is known as uh, uh, you know what you call the cladogram right or dendrogram so usually it's cladogram so diagonal is a choice when the trees conveys only the the clade membership and topology like this so this is known as cladogram or dendrogram you know so by the way there is no strict and hard and fast rules about all these names so sometimes it is used interchangeably some others uh, tend to say all these are phylogenetic trees or phylograms you know so anyway you can see that nodes in the last module i told you that nodes are nothing but speciation events you know especially allopatric speciation uh, where one species split into two or different daughter species one putative species split into two or different uh, you know the uh, daughter species internal branch or the edge of the tree so as you know the, all these lines are nothing but populations populations are all dynamic which are evolving accumulating different base changes to a point that you know this population uh, separates out into two for example this is the ancestor of a human and chimp then it becomes human and chip so that way so root of the tree node internal branch and terminal or external branch all these concepts i've already told you in the last module and now coming next is the cladograms can be drawn rectangular or the diagonal fashion but phylograms are always on rectangular fashion so remember phylograms are the the trees where the branch lengths make sense because the branch lengths are drawn 
uh, proportional to the uh, you know the changes uh, substitutions on the, the sites you know so that way the phylograms are there so to distinguish you can just look for the unit legend for the branch length that is x substitutions per site here you can see that the ledger says 0 0.1 substitutions per site that is a legend so it, this one is definitely a phylogram where branch length is drawn proportional to the uh, the substitution you can see that there are some branches are really long while some are really tiny for example this branch is the tiniest that is the shortest branch while this is the longest branch right so that is the difference here now the, the term sister groups what does that means it's like sisters you know so descendants of the single nodes are sister taxa so the, the name is basically about the daughter right so this is the the parent population these two are daughter populations so two daughters the relationship is sister right so owing to that uh, you know the linguistic artifact these uh, taxon are, no, are known as sister taxon you know so this is a parent so the two daughters are usually called sister taxon right so this entire taxon you know this clade is sister to which clade can you tell me think about it a and b together forms one clade which had been one species earlier before the split right so this particular species is sister to which group yes taxon c so taxon c is sister to the clade encompassing taxon a and b and vice versa so ta the clade encompassing taxon a and b is sister to the taxon c so that way uh, you can make assumptions about uh, the phylogenetic tree now coming to another concept called monophyly monophyly again i've uh, uh, explained that to you in the last module so monophyly is uh, one most recent common ancestor and all its descendants and you can cut it uh, you know the entire branch by just one cut so if I cut here crocodile and bird can be separated out you know so this is a clade or cluster or a monophyletic group right so at the same time a lizard and crocodile if I want to cut this group I need at least two cuts I need to separate birds and I also need to separate mammal so that is what, what you call it as a non monophyletic group in this case it is a paraphyletic group uh, if you remember the traditional zoological tra uh, systematics name this as reptile so as you know reptile as such is not natural unless you include the birds in it you know sauropsid is natural but reptile itself is you know defined based on exclusion criterion and that is why it is a paraphyletic group you know so another example of monophyly you can see on the left side aves AFC is a monophyletic. All birds had one common ancestor which is not shared with other non-avian dinosaurs, you know. And uh, all together, crocodiles, dinosaurs and aves together form one group, you know, which is a monophyletic group again. But if you define only the dinosaurs in which aves are cut out, crocodiles are cut out, this kind of group is called paraphyletic group correct you know that is what I just explained earlier right so that is why AFC is a monophyletic but non-avian dinosaur is a paraphyletic group you know so uh, another example here on the right side dinosauria is one group in which birds are also involved and non-avian dinosaurs are also involved so the entire clade is called dinosauria in this uh, on the left panel this one is called dinosauria so dinosauria is a monophyletic group no problem right but if you exclude birds to define the dinosaur then that is a problem and that is called paraphyletic group you know so one main uh, feature of the phylogenetic systematics is that uh, or uh, you know some example of phylogenetic systematics apg group you know angiosperm phylogeny group or or carl Wuse's three domain system you know carl Wuse way back in 2001 proposed this idea of three domain archaea eukarya and uh, you know you bacteria right you bacteria archaebacteria and eukarya these are the three domains of the Carl Wuse or the latest one is Cavalier Smith Oxford a zoologist right he's basically a protistologist his six kingdom classification uh, names only monophyletic group so that means that only natural groups are named in phylogenetic systematics so that is uh, uh, one of the characteristic of the phylogenetic systematics oh yeah this is a uh, you know this uh, meme from the internet 
So as you see, the chicken is one way. Uh, in in one sense, chicken is nothing but dinosaur. You know, in the in the in the earlier picture, you can see that dinosauria is uh, including all the non-avian dinosaurs plus birds. So in 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 strict sense, this chicken is nothing but uh, a kind of a dinosaur. You know, so this this dinosaur, this uh, aggressive dinosaur, 65 million years ago, is telling the chicken, "I'm strong, alpha beast, and I can kill everybody who stands in my way." And the chicken says, "Boo! Well, don't kill me. I'll give you an egg." <laughs> you know, see. And by the way, this is not a, ch a chicken. You can see that this is basically a cute. Uh, you know, uh, dog, <laughs> isn't it? So it, yeah, I mean, why not? So this section here, in this is a kind of a quiz. Section Indoniensis is an example of monophyletic group, paraphyletic group, or polyphyletic group. So section Indosinensis is this this particular group. You know, you can see that here, uh, kind of a bluish gray background. So this group, the Indosinensis is is it monophyletic group? paraphyletic group or polyphyletic group think about it the ancestor of all this clade is this does it include any other branch which is not part of this this is definitely not belongs to this ancestor right so this mrc includes this plus this yeah so you're excluding it psychus you're excluding to define in those analysis. so definitely this is a paraphyletic group so the answer is b you know now Next question here is a which is a sister group of Ulva Sapora. So Ulva Sapora is basically uh, you know all these groups. This is uh, called Ulva Sapora. All this is Ulva Sapora here. This clade, this particular clade. This is Ulva Sapora. And which is a sister group of it? Sister group is basically this group. You know Ulva Linsa, Ulva Rigida, and Ulva Chaguli. So all this forms one clade, and this clade is sister to this clade. Right, because this speciation event resulted in two of the sister taxa, right? So daughter taxa of this ancient population had been this clade and this clade. So both these clades are having a sister taxa relationship now, right? Is that clear? Now the concept called reciprocal monophyly. So reciprocal monophyly in a phylogeny tree is a strong support for to bolster new species discovery. So basically, you can see that. Two groups are completely separated into two distinct clades. So if you look at here, red and uh, you know the blue, none of the red is part of the blue, and none of the blue is part of the red. And as you can see, all these groups you can see completely uh, monophyletic, no, not a single exception. So in this sort of thing, all these are different, different isolates of the same uh, species. You know, uh, if, if I zoom in, you can see that this is basically something called Varestrolingus, right? Varestrolingus is basically this organism. So it's a nematode, you know. So various species of uh, Varestrolingus, you can see that species Alces all forms one clade and not a member of Alces is part of this clade, right? And none of these are part of this clade. So that is what you call it as reciprocal monophyly. So in phylogenetic systematic, this kind of reciprocal monophyly is a very strong evidence that uh, you know that argue in favor of new species discoveries, you know. And uh, polyphyly, now you can see that in this particular, this is a very famous paper by Hayden et al., uh, you know, which they published way back in 2005. Uh, this one is a complete polyphyly of the two uh, putative genus. So this one is uh, is called Enteromorpha and Ulva. So Ulva and Enteromorpha were kind of completely polyphyletic. For example, this one phyla, let me zoom on to it. Uh, you know, this particular uh, clade, it's a very big clade, you see. So this clade has got Ulva, Andromorpha, Andromorpha, Ulva, Andromorpha. So it's completely chaotic, you see. Ulva doesn't form one clade, Andromorpha doesn't form another clade. In that case, then you can say that Ulva and Andromorpha are resolved, right? So it's natural. But in this case, it's very clear it's not natural. And these two things, you can see that there is one tree on the right side and there is a tree on the left side. So left side tree is based on ITS 
nuclear ribosomal DNA sequence which is uh, you know which is a locus while on the right side tree is based on RBCL sequence a large subunit of the rubisco spacer you know so these two are two genes so based on ITS or based on RBCL uh, you know this uh, particular these two genes are polyphyletic so neither in RBCL or nor in ITS enteromorphin ulva forms a clade so this is a very strong evidence of paraphyly and that has led to the Hayden to merge both of these into one species I mean one genus Ulva and Enteromorph or genus of green algae you see green seaweeds marine algae so this if you merge it then you have to apply the principle of priority which name is older so in this case Ulva is so much older Ulva is a Linnaean genus right uh, Linnaeus didn't uh, separate out Linnaeus uh, for him he grouped all together but later taxonomists they incorrectly said they incorrectly uh, you know uh, uh, they actually put forth the enteromorpha you know enteromorpha is uh, uh, it's it's a it's a new genus which put forth by later taxonomist which according to this particular study is invalid because Ulva and Enromorpha are same. So as per the principle of priority, uh, this merged genus should be Ulva. It should not be Enromorpha. I hope you are getting this point, right? So that is what the polyphyly, if you, I mean, of course, you can publish the paper on polyphyly too, right? And you can propose to merge this genus or two, two different species into one. Then you have to apply the principle of priority. So now the second next concept is species cryptic speciation. Cryptic means uh, secret, you know. So basically, earlier thought to be one species, but you know, after uh, molecular evidence or other forms of evidence comes in, in light. So this putative earlier species is basically uh, multiple species. So, you know, it is cryptic speciation. That is what it means. So, uh, there are there exist several species which are unknown to the sciences, earlier thought to be just one species, you know. So, one good example would be uh, uh, this one, the giraffe. You see, the giraffe earlier thought to be just one species. And this uh, particular study found there are six separate species of the giraffe, you know, from different parts of the uh, Africa, you know various African places you can find that there are different kinds of giraffes available so yeah you know if I zoom in you can see that uh, yes so you can see that these are all monophyletic clades clade 1 clade 2 you know and 3 4 these colors represent uh, you know the, the place where it is actually coming from so West African or reticulated is somewhere near the Kenya and Namibia well I have been to these areas I can I can tell you where all I went I went to the Kenya I went to Namibia I went to Zimbabwe I went to South Africa Cape Town from where I took forth my maiden voyage to Antarctica <laughs> you know it's it's from the uh, Cape Town right here in South Africa yeah? so this is yeah this is what uh, the, the famous paper published a few years back you know so they erected there there are six separate species inside one putative species called giraffe you know so that is what uh, cryptic speciation is all about usually it is a, a elevation of subspecies to the species level cryptic speciation but after this paper uh, got published it, it caused such a big controversy among the zoologists you know uh, old zoologists uh, especially they taught many years that there was only one species of giraffe they got completely uh, you know they, they got uh, upset by this study and they were completely rejecting this new evidence you know and then this paper got refined by new set of authors recently very recently the new paper has published in this year you know so this is uh, as you can see May 5th of 2021 so it's in this month a few weeks back this paper has published so a uh, whole genome analysis of giraffe supports four distinct species so this paper is based on whole genome sequences while the earlier paper is not based on the whole genome it's based on few uh, separate genes you know so this paper is whole genome so as per this one there are four separate not six but four you know so all these things keep on refining based on the new 
pieces of evidence right so science is always progressing right that is what it is so the term split and lump for in the case of giraffe it is basically splits so you know so both of the splits and lumps are taxonomic corrections that alter the circumscription of the scientific name without altering the name itself so name is not altered only circumscription is altered you know so basically circumscription means which are the members of that species right so division of a putative species suspected you know purported species into multiple species is known as splits like earlier one giraffe now there are multiple giraffe right that is called split which usually occurs through raising of subspecies to the full species so cryptic species get split into individual species when found you know as in the case of giraffe now union of putative species into a single species is called lumps you know that is also known as synonymy we have seen that genus level synonymy after the paraphyly of the endromorpha and ulva together right that kind of thing is known as lump you know it could be genus level or it could be species level too right and the tree topology is nothing but the branching order we have covered the topology in the last uh, module so you can rotate the branches i didn't explicitly state that so no problem with rotating the branches you know so that uh, the nodes rotating the branch at the nodes does not alter the relationship so all these trees are termed compatible the term compatible means all trees are uh, convey the same message so scientifically all these are accurate uh, they portray the same relationship between the branches you know so this is the master tree and if i rotate with this branch b c d a became reversed a d c b you know now if i rotate here in this node d c b became b c d right and if i rotate at this branch c d became d c so all these are permissible and all these convey the same thing you know uh, same message so the, uh, all these trees you can say it as compatible the term compatible means trees convey the same message right so all these four represents are acceptable topology remains same all these trees are compatible you know so now uh, consider these four trees as well so diagonal up representation uh, rectangular right representation circle or diagonal down so you can consider some of these things we can check it out there is a clade bcd here also you can see a clade bcd here also there is a clade b c and d b c and d this clade circle is kind of intuitive and you really need to put some logic to understand it it's not that easy to decipher in my experience diagonal and rectangular are much easier than circular though circular looks like complicated sophisticated you know and that is why people prefer to give go with the circular representation it's not really easy to understand the relationship and now in this diagonal down also bc you can see so all these brand uh, you know the the clades so basically it has got three clades clade cd clade bcd and then clade abcd are present in all the four uh, trees so that is why all this th four trees of tree like representations are or uh, the topology remains same so you can say that all these these trees are compatible next point is pruning so as you know the pruning as in uh, you know it's it's cutting isn't it so prune, pruning of the garden uh, flowering plants exactly like that so pruning is a process of removing the tips of clades without changing the topology or relationship uh, of the remaining tips you know so you can just cut it off uh, to get the subtree so here are the tips a c and d a c and d if you remove this a if you remove a and b and c just straight out you are going to get this way you know so a c and d right a you're cutting c you're cutting and d you're cutting so b e f g like this you're going to get the subtree uh, that is uh, uh, virtually both these trees are compatible only the difference is that some leaves are removed so it is absolutely fine so still the trees are compatible there is no difference in the topping topology the the branching order you see so uh, it does not contradict in existing relationship between these two trees so uh, in the uh, uh, figurative tree the the real tree as well literal tree if you look at the tree 
from path A, uh, I mean there is a branch A, there is another branch Z of the real tree. So consider a squirrel is going from A to the branch Z through the nearest path. So it doesn't matter you are adding or removing other branches. If Even if you cut this branch, the nearest path from A to Z remains same. Right? It's immaterial. You are adding more branch or removing the branch. So that is the same concept of this particular uh, manure called pruning you know so each tip is connected to the rest of the tree by only one connection uh, in uh, literal tree or uh, the phylogenetic tree you know so that is why pruning so two pruned version of the same larger tree so here here you can see a larger tree uh, so this larger tree if you uh, prune uh, some of the sections you're going to get this sub tree same larger tree but some other uh, you know branches see if you prune you're going to get different subtree so all these are basically compatible so both these trees are compatible so that is what the compatibility is all about the tree compatibility it doesn't actually contradict the existing relationship or the phylogenetic relationship of these things another maneuver is known as merging so what is that a maneuver for simplifying a tree by representing a clade with a single appropriately labeled tip so instead of putting all this D, E, F, G, you, you're defining it as clade H and uh, you're redrawing the tree with the clade H here. See? So clade H could be anything, angiosperm or gymnosperm or whatever the named clades are, right? So you can actually make it that way. You can label it and you can put it this way. For example, the three domains of uh, Carl Wusse, uh, usually only domains names are there. It's not expanded, right? So that is also a kind of merging maneuver. It's very useful to simplify large trees. For example, tree of life, lots and lots of uh, uh, leaves. You know so all these things you can actually make you can just label it and you can just merge it so that you can expand it by clicking so that is what i told is all about right interactive tree of life so a lot of merged trees are there so merging is valid only if the named groups are monophyletic so in this case it's a clade h is a clade that means it can separate with just one cut so e, had it been c d and e c d and e it's not a monophyletic group it's a polyphyletic group so had it been that case then merging is impossible so merging is possible only if it's a monophyletic clade you know that's really really important and trees contain information about the relative age of the nodes that are on the same path from the root that is the most important concept here from the root it should be on the same path then only the relative age is there so b and c you know uh, b and c are on the different path isn't it so uh, of course you can say that b and c are both younger than a because a is older a is a parent from which clade b and clade uh, c originated right so of course the uh, you know the, uh, the kids are always younger than their parents so that way you can always say that no problem with that right is b older than c that means C lived before B. That is tricky here. You know, so that kind of, it looks apparently C is younger than B, but you cannot make that assumption because rate of changes on this clade and this clade might be different, right? So unless it's a time tree, that kind of inferences are not possible. You know, so that is why uh, uh, B and C, you cannot make any uh, inference. Only thing you can say is that B and C are both younger than A because A is a parent both b and c are uh, uh, you know that came later so it must be definitely younger you know so this one is uh, it has to be on the same path to make that kind of inferences time tree is basically chronogram uh, so it's basically the one one of the axis is the time here you can see the million years before present present is this zero then 10 million years 20 million years like that so if you look at this chronogram c predates the b that means the b is younger than c you know that's accurately you can say that b is younger than the c right and now you can put this dated fossil to put limits on the tree so for example here this f is a fossil uh, which is dated at 55 million years ago by radiometric dating so just by putting this f here you can say that y is at least uh, you know 55 million years ago old you can say that way 
you know so z is younger than 55 million is it's an invalid assumption you cannot make that kind of, of uh, inferences you know so because it, it looks to be on the right side uh, you, you cannot make that kind of inferences you know so but now if you look at this chronogram yes that's valid assumptions you can make it so it can be concluded that the z predates the f you know f is younger so you can conclude that f is younger than the z because it's, it's basically proportional to the time here the axis is uh, the million years before present you see so that kind of conclusions are valid in this kind of time tree you know now coming to consensus tree two resolved trees can be combined to form a consensus tree here the tree one tree two you can combine these two together to form one consensus tree consensus means combined tree right so in strict consensus tree like this clades are those groups that occur in all input trees so whatever the clades you can see there is, i can see only one clade in this tree right and two clade and three clade. there are three clades here basically the, this fg is the only one terminal clade you can see so this fg is present in both this input tree yes correct now there is another clade i can see is defg 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 in both the trees you can see that clade but this one is not really, it's a soft polytomy. D and E together does not form a clade. D and E forms a clade here, but it does not form a clade here. It's a paraphyletic. That is why you are forming this kind of soft poly polytomy. So if one input tree, uh, you know, a clade is not formed as in this case, D is a clade here, D is not a clade here. So it is gonna lead to soft polytomies. So polytomies, that are used to communicate uncertainties in the consensus tree. So another soft polytomy you can see here, A, B, C, that uh, shows there is some problems with the input trees. You know, it, it, both the input trees are not same. So for example, here you can see A, B, C. A, B form a clade, then C. Here, B, C form a clade, then A. <coughs> so both these trees are not compatible, right? So that is why this strict consensus tree is different. So strength of support of particular clade is indicated by bootstrap score. So I told you the phylogram or phylogenetic tree is a hypothesis. So you need to have a p-value for this hypothesis like elsewhere in statistics, right? So that probability value is given by bootstrap scores for maximum likelihood and maximum parsimony or posterior probability score for Bayesian inference next to the clade. So all these clades have got the numbers here, you know. Uh, for example, the statistical support for Cycus segmentifida forming a clade with Cycus titungensis was only 50 percentage. So if you zoom it in, you, you will see that this particular clade, uh, Cycus segmentifida and Cycus titungensis, uh, you know, only 50 percentage. That is what the bootstrap proportion is uh, 0.69, uh, you know, according to the, the base inference, like 69 percentage. But according to the, the bootstrap proportion, that is basically as per the maximum likelihood or maximum parsimony, it's only 50 percentage. So this tree is based on maximum likelihood. So bootstrap proportion is about the maximum likelihood method, right? So tree to tree distance is uh, what is the difference between one tree to another tree. So if you really want to calculate tree one, tree two and tree three. So how much is the distance between these two tree? That's kind of complicated concept, but it's actually quite simple. So it's a measure of the topological difference between two trees containing exactly same set of tips. So if the tips are there, if there is some difference in the tip, for example, this tree doesn't contain D, then you cannot compare with tree one. So tree one and tree two can be compared. You can calculate tree to tree distance. If and only if, the same set of tips are there. So in this case, the three trees have same set of tips. So you can calculate it, tree to tree distances, you know. So if you look at the tree one and tree two, uh, you know, how many clades are being uh, same? So, uh, you know, you can easily spot some clade. For example, B and A forms a clade here. I can also spot here, B and A is a clade. Then there is a uh, there is another clade here. I can see that I. If you separate I, all the rest forms one clade here. Also, all the rest forms one clade, right? So basically, 
uh, tree 1 shares 2 clades with tree 2 and 3 clades with tree 3. So which are these clades? You can actually identify it. Uh, the, the, there are two clades. So I told you one clade is this, second clade is B and A, right? Uh, so B and A is also forms a clade here. So tree 1 and tree 2, there are two clades. Now tree 1 and tree uh, 3, there are three clades. What are these three clades? Of course, one clade is BA, BA. Second clade is all the in-group except I, all the in-group except I. And what is the third clade here? You will have to find out the third clade. So, uh, you know, so CBA forms a clade here. CBA doesn't form a clade here, right? So, you know, you can actually see that GH is forms a clade. Yes, GH forms a clade in this, right? BA, BA, GH, GH and all in group. So there are three clades. I repeat, GH is a clade here, GH is a clade here, one. BA is a clade here, BA is a clade here, two. And all in group except I forms a clade. All in groups except I forms a clade. So three. Is that clear to you? Now coming next is subtree pruning and regrafting very interesting so there is one way uh, to find uh, you know the tree to tree distance here so tree 1 you can convert tree 1 to tree 2 by cutting this ba cutting means pruning and regrafting this in between h and g let us see let us cut it and straight up so dc becomes dc here and now you are regrafting in in between H and G. So you can see the H and G in between BA comes. Yeah, that is the only difference between these two trees. The branch BA cut it and regrafted in between H and G. You know, so uh, with a connection with the G. So that is why BA forms a clade with G. So that is something called subtree pruning and regrafting. It's a manual that entails cutting a piece of a tree and reattaching to the new location after the SPR of course the trees are not compatible you these two trees are not compatible so SPR is only used to see uh, that the distance between the trees you know so often subtree refer the clades so uh, occasionally the tips can also be uh, you know pruned and regrafted so uh, it's a measure for the tree to tree distance and tree one and two are separated by just one SPR event so therefore the distance is 1 and tree 1 to tree 3 how many SPRs events are there tree 1 to tree 3 that means from 1 if you want to actually do this pruning and regrafting to make tree 3 how many subtree pruning and regrafting events are needed if you carefully observe you will see that there are three events needed so F you cut it and put it in between B and A to form F, B and A. Then you need to cut E to put to the C to form C and E clade. And the third one is D. You cut the D and put in, uh, you know, just after H and G in this particular clade. You graft it here to form H, G and D. See, like this, H, G and D. So there are three uh, sub tree pruning and regrafting events are there so this particular manual is usually used for unrooted trees you know so one tree topology can be converted to any tree topology by a set of subtree pruning and regrafting you, you see that in this case just one subtree pruning and regrafting is sufficient to make it into this particular thing so a b c e as comes here then comes uh, g and h then comes f e d so this particular group right so f e and d so this group has come up here so it's only one spr event right so uh, that is what you know from one tree to another tree there are a set of this kind of subtree pruning and regrafting you can convert in a series of this kind of spr events so tree space is three dimensional space of the tree topology so various tree topologies on a three dimensional space like in a cube cubical space xyz space so that is known as tree space you know so to find the optimal tree heuristic algorithms traverse through these topologies by the way heuristics means shortcut 
instead of looking all these millions of trees the algorithms uh, you know seed certain event and look for uh, local maxima and then they declare this is a global maxima you know uh, i don't want to jump all this deeps into it but again tree space is really important to find the optimal tree out of millions of trees you see so one of the popular algorithm is something called tbr algorithm that is tree bisection and reconnection something like a, a subtree pruning and regrafting isn't it so that is what you call the uh, you know this particular three dimensional space is known as uh, tree uh, tree space you know so the tree space is uh, this kind of tree space you can see that uh, you know uh, x y and z so z is basically likelihood score so likelihood that the, the tree is right tree you know so this algorithm is something called nearest neighbor interchange algorithm is used uh, for iq tree is a software for efficient search for which is the optimum optimal tree so the the idea is that given a million tree or billion tree which phylogenetic tree to be chosen you know so to find out you have to find the help of this heuristic algorithm uh, like monte carlo simulation is also another popular algorithm to find uh, the optimal tree you know so uh, you can see that there are several seeds here you know so uh, basically uh, this this particular starting point is called seed from if you start it it goes uphill uh, nearest neighbor interchange then it goes downhill then again uphill so uphill when it goes downhill that is known as that star is kind of local maximum then finally it went to the another local maximum here local maximum it went and again it went to another local maximum and here is another local maximum finally after this three seed you will find that this is a global maximum you know so instead of looking each and every tree so just by three seed you are finding out the global maximum so you can save a lot of time you know by following this method so that is uh, what this all uh, you know the interpretation of uh, trees is all about so in this uh, brief video we have seen va uh, various terms as i explained the, the beginning sister groups reciprocal monophyly remember reciprocal monophyly is a uh, very good proof for uh, to bolster our hypothesis about new species cryptic speciation species splits versus species lumps and compatibility you know and pruning merging time tree consensus trees then tree to tree distance one way to find this tree to tree distance is by subtree pruning and regrafting and uh, finally we come across a concept called tree space thanks for watching